Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so this is a piece that um, I am doing that is a pa Pablo Barrios, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, he is, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not finding a lot of other work by him. I, weirdly enough, inked this several years ago uh, when I first kind of got a notion that I wanted to, to practice some inking and uh, found this online and I'm had it in my portfolio for a long time and I looked at it the other day and I just wasn't real thrilled with it and I had the blue line still printed out from when I was trying to uh, have it in my portfolio so I could have an example of the pencils and the inks. And my printer was without ink so I needed something to ink and practice on and I pulled this out. Um, and I had recently done a, uh, a um, inking review or a portfolio review uh, with someone and one of the things they mentioned is that I needed to be a little more purposeful with my uh, my hatching lines so um, trying to make sure that I've got those evenly spaced or at least where it makes sense to have them very evenly spaced like there's some of the rock face stuff where I'm kind of trying to be a little more erratic so that it feels um, coarser in texture and feels a little more natural uh, but for the most part I am trying to keep everything even um, there's lots of that on this that I did not try or attempt the first time that I did it. So I wanted to give it another shot. And to be honest, I don't really ink the same pieces over again very often. And I don't know why. Um, I think there's this weird sense that I've finished it. I've accomplished it. So I'll learn something from the next piece I do. But honestly, what I really should be doing is going through and just redoing a piece occasionally when I don't like certain things about it. Um, I can already tell you this piece looks a dozen times better than the original version I did, and I'm not finished with it yet. Um, I have been using a little bit, using it a little bit as a warm up piece. I'll come in and work on a corner of this or a section of this for a while, and then uh, move on to another piece that I'm actually working on that I'll, I'll be making a video for later. I apologize that I haven't really made any videos or, ha or haven't edited any videos. I have a sick dog at home. Um, not sure why. She's about eight or nine years old. She's a Staffordshire pup. Uh, and she just kind of stopped eating, stopped going to the bathroom, um, has been lethargic and not moving. And we have been to two ER visits. Um, at one point in time, it just we couldn't get her to eat anything. We couldn't get her to drink anything. And um, so I've been, that's kind of neither here nor there, not really about inking. But I, I'm simply saying is that I've been very busy with some family emergencies uh, going on recently. And I've um, spent a lot of money on vets uh, the last few days, money that I don't really have. So uh, I have been trying to prioritize some other things and trying to figure out some other ways to, to make sure that this happens. So uh, I, I apologize that I haven't been able to edit anything and get it out for you guys. Um, wanted to have something to put out there, wanted to have something that gave me a chance to more practice a little bit more on my quill work. Um, it's so funny, man. I... I kind of started doing all of this because I wanted to work digitally. It seemed easy. It seemed fast. And to be honest, I feel like a lot of the things I've done digitally look a little cleaner, I guess, um, tighter. Uh, but that's because you can manipulate things digitally just to no end. Um, so what I have been doing since I've been trying to practice my quill work, which I am not as good at because I can't manipulate it as much, uh, I have been trying to really put myself, and sorry, I'm off camera there a little bit. Uh, I've been really trying to put myself out there and just try new things, practice on lots of different artists, um, look at the things that I see other artists doing that they're that are really good at, that they're really good at, that I struggle with. Um, and one of those is just evenly spacing lines, so I'm working on that a little bit. Um, I feel like I'm doing pretty well with it here, but this may not end up being a portfolio piece again. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. Right now, I'm kind of taking my time on it. I think one of the things I was doing digitally was that I was moving fast. I was able to move fast because mistakes didn't matter. Uh, you could, you know, correct and correct and correct. Um, that's not the case here. You have to be very confident in what you're planning on doing for the next line or how you're planning on achieving something. Um, so 
I had to learn to kind of slow myself down and be more precise with my lines, but also slow myself down and uh, realize that I don't have to crank out a page six or eight in six six or eight hours. I can I um, it's better to get good because speed will come with good. Um, I worked as a chef for a long time, and I would tell my cooks is like, it doesn't matter how fast you put it out. If it looks bad and tastes bad, nobody wants it. Um, and I kind of feel like that's sort of true of art. Like, I don't care how fast I am. If it's not something that I can keep building my reputation on and my portfolio on and my, my body of work on, then uh, that's fine. I, I, I still need to complete the pieces and learn what I learned from them, but I got to be more discerning about what is good work and what is not. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about the feedback thing. Uh, I recommend feedback. It's so easy as an artist to kind of get caught in a bubble. Even when you're talking to people online, you're doing your own thing in your own place. You know, it's not, um, it's not like you're working in a studio, you know, or you're working around other artists that you can kind of hit up and, and say, Hey man, how do I do this? How do I do that? So feedback and critique is really the only way to do it. And, um, it's a little scary, you know? I was a little nervous the first time I did it just because it can break you down a lot. Um, I remember I was in high school and I had been wanting to be a comic artist for, for several years. And um, I got into art in high school. I'd been kind of, I hate to say it, sort of the star of my art class in middle school. And then I moved up to high school and suddenly there was a few other people in there who were just as good as I was. And I felt a little threatened by that. Um, then I went and took, it wasn't a portfolio, we're talking like 1991, 92, I went to a convention with some sketchbook stuff because I couldn't find Bristol board, I couldn't find good quill pens and good ink. So, you know, I didn't know what I was doing and I was looking for any guidance I could. And I don't remember who I talked to, but I talked to somebody um, and I took my portfolio up to him and he kind of just tore me apart. Like he was not, a jerk, but he was definitely not considerate or not as I shouldn't say not considerate. He was fine. He was doing what he was supposed to do. And I needed to learn to not be as sensitive, but I didn't know how to not be as sensitive. Then I was 15, you know, 14, whatever. And, uh, it was painful for me. Um, so I took everything that my family had told me and my parents had told me and the other people in the world had told me about how this isn't a real career and I'll starve and maybe I'm, what if I end up not being good enough? And I took that to heart and um, I kind of quit for several years. And then somewhere in my 30s, I decided that I, I just needed to make art. It was impossible for me to not make art. Sorry, there is a guy mowing his lawn outside, so I'm trying to, I might have to stop and record this bit later. Sorry about that, guys. I've got a neighbor who's mowing his yard. Um, I've had him to edit these on Saturdays lately, so it's a pretty day. Uh, probably one of the last, like, cool days we'll have for the year, and uh, it's, you know, Saturday morning, so there's bound to be people out working in the yards. Nothing I can really do about that. Um, one of the things I'm proud of right here is not really even the inking. I just got a new mount for my camera, so you're not looking at it at that weird angle. You can actually look down. Um, I got a adjust to make sure that I'm staying on camera for that a little bit better, but I think it gives you a much better angle and you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, pay no attention to the cheesy glove. Believe it or not, the uh, the skeleton glove is something I got for Christmas this last year, and I kind of hate them. The, the little rubber things come off, or the, the printing, screen printing on them wants to come off. Um, the glove that I'm wearing underneath that is actually just a compression glove because I've been having a little bit of uh, pain in my thumb lately with uh, my scrolling finger for my, my phone. <laughs> uh, technology, right? Um, so mostly, I was talking about the critique thing. I want to kind of get back to that. The critique is important. Um, you need to not be in a void. You need to find ways to get better. And you can also develop bad habits if you go along too long without feedback. Um, so... The best way to do it, the way you used to have to do it, was go to, go to conventions and, you know, get torn apart by a guy after you spent, you know, 20 bucks to get into the convention and probably six bucks on a soda. Um, so 
in the modern age, we have a lot more connection to actual artists. You can reach out via social media and say, hey, you know, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Um, although I wouldn't do that. Most of these guys are going to be busy. They've got a lot going on. And to be honest, critiquing your art is not their job. It is um, drawing comics is, you know. Um, there are a lot of very generous artists out there. Uh, I, the names that come to mind are guys like uh, David Finch and Francis Manipal and uh, Richard Friend and just these guys that, that provide free tutorials all over the place. I mean, they have Patreons, and I recommend that, and we'll get into that in a second. But really, if you want to learn to ink or paint or pencil or anything, there's just there's a ton of guys doing some really popular stuff on YouTube showing you that. Uh, I'm hoping to kind of, as I learn, be one of them, because teaching is part of how I learn. But what I would really recommend is find somebody that you like, find some techniques that you kind of want to work with, and then see if they have a Patreon. See if they have a Gumroad uh, where they sell brushes or lessons or something like that. Um, and a lot of artists, uh, I know Richard Friend does full different art critiques. I know Jim Lee has done a few. Uh, I know David Finch has done a few. Walden Wong does them regularly for his Patreon, as does uh, Rich Friend. Um, and I actually have had a critique by, by Rich last month, and I'm, I, it was some of my earlier work, and I want to kind of revisit some of my newer stuff. Um, but that's okay. He, he actually gave me some really great feedback. He told me some things that I really needed to work on and pay attention to, uh, one of which being um, being more precise with my hatching lines and not just kind of going in kind of wild style, uh, throwing lines. Uh, another thing, you know, that I'm, I'm really trying to work on is my line weights and throwing my, my really pulling and pushing nice lines and knowing kind of how I can manipulate the tools better. It's easier with digital in some ways because you can kind of, well, you can undo. And, you know, if you don't like a line, you can just throw it 15, 20 times, <laughs> you know. Um, that's not really the case when you're doing traditional work. So that has been harder for me, but I'm trying. I'm, I'm getting better at it. I feel like the work I'm producing is, is definitely progressing me further as an artist but that feedback is necessary and um you know you can get a lot of different ways of getting feedback you can go and you know uh, they have different tiers on their patreons very often and you can get you know actual critiques and reviews you can even in very a lot of cases get, get lessons you know 50 dollars a month is to learn a career super cheap you know uh, breaking in is a whole different thing, but you're talking about schooling. You know, uh, I went to culinary school, and I have to tell you, you don't come out of culinary school a, a world-renowned chef. You have to still go through and, and pay your dues, and that is the same in art. I don't care how much you learn. You've got to be able to put out provocative art that people want to see. And, you know, learning to do that, you could either go to a college, spend thousands of dollars and go in debt, or $50 a month on a Patreon with a human being who actually knows what they're doing and talk to them about it. Um, I, I highly recommend it. Um, there's a few, few different guys I, I would recommend. Um, but also just how to draw comics.net. How to, the, there's so many places, you know, comics. This, this wasn't available when I was a kid, man. Take advantage of it. It's so funny to me. I, I, with all the new digital things, I still keep going back to the tools that I wanted to learn when I was 12. 13, 14, you know. Um, really not talking about inking this piece so much as I am sort of talking about inking in general and, you know, I don't know how to learn, where to learn. Um, one thing I will say, though, is the textures on this, this rock face over here were kind of interesting. There's a lot of what looks like kind of long hatched lines that are then broken up. Um, so what I kind of decided to do was do some long hatch lines and then go through and break those up a little bit with some white gel pen and splat, white splatter to kind of get more of a texture. Um, you'll notice I'm throwing lines too. These are not like I'm not just feathering and sketching them in. I am throwing lines. Um, now I can go through and sculpt a line out and I do very often. Um, but when I kind of know what I'm looking for here, I, I have a confidence to, to be able to just pull. Um, and then I can go through and do some cleanup. 
and these little devil guys were fun. I don't even really know what this is for. I, I just found the page uh, several years back, and I really liked a lot of the things on it. Um, the textures, the little demon guys, some splatter, the hot girl, you know. It, a lot of great comic book tropes here um, that I could play with and things to learn. This is something else I'll recommend. You'll notice I do a lot of different artists on purpose. I, 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 I want to know as many different styles as I can, and I want to know that when I approach someone's style, am I approaching it individual to them, to that style? I have a big, I'm a big believer that you adapt your inking to the artist you're working with that, to make the best product, you know? Um, so I, I'm trying to find what this artist is intending, his separations, the the intention of kind of coarseness um, and rough line work while still being precise. Uh, it's totally different than drink, than inking the uh, Greg Capullo thing I did a couple of weeks ago, which was about very precise work and the lines, even when rough, were flowing a little more. Um, I've done a couple of Jim Lee pieces and I'll, I'll probably do one for this page as well. Uh, and what I really like to do, especially with pages that have been inked before, is I'll go through and I'll really look at the inks, you know, see what the other artists have done, and then I'll put it away. And I'll try not to think about that too much. Um, you know, if I get really stuck, I might go look. But mostly what I'll do is just try and approach it with, how do I see this? How do I interpret it? Um, what is my best approach for it? And I kind of go in, you know, what looks fun is what I do next. But I still will have a little bit of a plan of... I want these lines to be this. I want this hatching to kind of look like this type of feathering that I've seen before and hatching that I've seen before. And, um, you know, I'm looking for a look, you know, a style. Sometimes to get a style, you have to approach it with certain techniques. And um, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, this nib holder I'm using here, I wanted to talk about it for a minute. I, I've seen... The Griffin Hold, I think is what it's called. It's a metal nib holder. It kind of works similar to this. It's In essence, what this is, is a... Uh, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> I was um, looking for an X-Acto knife, and I found this thing kind of on the bottom shelf at, at uh, I think it was a Hobby Lobby, which is not really a company I like to work with, but, you know, not as many art stores around as I'd like for there to be. Anyways, this is a... Uh, it came with like three X-Acto knife blades and a, uh, a set of embossing tools, um, which were these little like metal shaft tools that you could put into the end of this um, and close down. And I was like, wow, that, that, those are about the same size as my nibs. And I'm, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the little plastic nib holders. They, they're light and I, they crack. And honestly, eventually they will start stop being tight and holding the, uh, the nib in place and you kind of have to fuss with them. Um, but I thought I'd give this a try. I really like it. I put one of those little foam grips on it. Um, my only problem with it is the, the, um, little aluminum screw top thing is a little heavier than I like. Um, it's okay. It was a good experiment. I may or may not try it again. Um, but you know, it was six bucks. It's a little plastic tube. It's got a little clamp thing and it. it holds the nib. Works really well. Um, Hobby Lobby, I think I've seen similar things at, at Michael's. Just look around. I think when I found it, I was on. I had been online a couple of days earlier, and I had seen an embossing tool. So I think when I saw that it was an embossing tool, I, I kind of knew that it would probably work for what I was looking for. Those tools seem to be about the same diameter. This is one of those places where I didn't follow exactly the line work that the artist had laid down. I kind of added some extra lines in a crosshatch format to sort of show the form a little bit more. I wanted to imply the the volume and shape of where that was. Um, you'll find that that's, that's true a lot. You know, you don't always follow the exact line of the artist. And I think that's for the best. Um, pencil does not 
lay down on paper the same way that ink does. So if you follow just what the artist does, you're always going to end up with something that kind of looks flat and you kind of need to manipulate it, massage it a little bit and kind of make it what it needs to be. Right. Yeah, I really like these guys. They're a lot of fun. I think that one in the foreground and the front was definitely my favorite. Um, he had a little texture on their, their hats or hair or something, um, and I might go back through with a white quill and add some of that in, but I really kind of feel like it needed those two black spots on either side of her to balance the black that's going to be above her head a little bit um, in that really dense hatching. And the white I'll add, I'll add at the end if I feel like it needs a an accent. I'm currently working on another piece here that I'm going to get going here pretty soon. I reached out to a, I don't know if you guys have heard of him. I'm sure you have. He is wonderful. Uh, and I learned a lot from him when I was first kind of getting back into drawing and really how to, to do some things on my iPad that I didn't know how to do. Uh, this guy's name's uh, Dr. Rocker. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, a piece that I've already started working on and I kind of was using this to warm up for. Um, man, I got to tell you, it's rendered. It's You'll you'll see it when I, I, sh I, I post the video of it, but I promise you. There is so many hatching techniques going on here and very fine, tight line work. And I'm really trying to show that without feeling like I am not qualified, <laughs> to be honest. I feel a little in over my head and I'm excited about getting it done. I'll be real proud of it when it is done. Uh, but as of right now, I feel a little bit like... Oh, God, what did I get into? <laughs> but, you know, that's part of the challenge. And I'm really learning some very tight techniques that um, I've struggled with before. So I, I want to kind of get those down. Uh, so much so that I actually started the piece over. I started for a little while. I was really unhappy with one spot on it that I, I was just not really getting what I wanted. And uh, I went back through and just slowed down and did what I needed to do. And I'm, I'm getting there a lot better. Um, taking a little, long, a little longer than I wanted, but it's getting there. I will probably have this done before the end of the afternoon today. Uh, I don't finish it in this video, but I will probably try and record that and do the last part of that video for it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and listen to me ramble. Um, here's a photo of kind of what it is looking like at its current progress state, and we'll get you some more here soon. Thanks a lot.